Hey YouTube, welcome back. Hello. It's an interesting time for me to be creating this video because Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 3 comes out tomorrow. And by the time you guys see this, it will already have happened. So I've decided to let you guys know my predictions on who I think is dying in the longest battle scene in film history. So check out who I got right and who I got wrong at the end of this video. So this week, I get the opportunity to film an awesome car with an iconic lineage, all because of my and Sophie's advertising adventure that we did last week. Oh no, I missed my turn. We stopped off at a bunch of places, handed out a ton of cards, and ended up meeting some really amazing and really smart car people. Luckily, some of them ended up contacting me back and letting me know they were interested. So today, we're off to go meet up with Frank the GM and Tom, who's this car's specific specialist at Acura of Bellevue. Let's go. You know guys, when I'm going out and uh, talking to strangers and I got Sophie with me and I got my you know, advertising card, cats and cars, and talking to them about the channel and what I'm trying to do and, and asking if I can film their cars, it is super awkward. It always is. It, that starting conversation is like, oh hey, what are you doing? Well, filming a YouTube channel with a, a cat and cars. And they're like, okay, why? <laughs> <laughs> and then I have to go through the whole thing and try and you know sell it and you know it's easy to get people interested in what you're doing if they can see the passion that you have for it right um, I love animals I love cars I love talking about it I love driving them I love being around them uh, and people can see that excitement when I kind of tell them what I'm doing you know when I, I show up with Sophie and they're like what's this guy doing with his cat um, and then I can kind of talk to them about it and let them know. Uh, and that's, you know, kind of advertising 101, right? It's easier for you to sell if you believe in what you're selling. And here we're going right here, Acura of Bellevue. They have set us up with something awesome. I can't wait to show you guys. We're gonna head on in, uh, shake hands, say hi to Frank here, uh, amazing guy, and we will get this going. I told you I had something awesome for you today. It's the 2019 Acura NSX. Talk about getting the VIP treatment with this car, guys. Uh, my guy, Frank, the GM of Acura of Bellevue, actually has us hooked up with a private showroom just for this car. Out here behind me is the actual showroom, and this is where they house the best of the best. Getting back to it though guys, this car is actually a hybrid motor vehicle. And, and what I mean by that is it has the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 in the back and the electric twin motor unit in the front. And I'm gonna show you guys that here in just a moment. Uh, but with all of that stuff coming together, this car produces 573 horsepower at 476 pound-feet of torque. Something interesting about the zero to 60 in this car that Tom told me about, who's the NSX specialist at Acura of Bellevue, is that the zero to 60 in most cars can be measured in two different ways. One, from the foot hitting the accelerator, and two, when the car actually takes off, assuming it's from a, a stop and not a rolling start, right? So with this car specifically, the acceleration of zero to 60 from the foot is 3.1 seconds, where from the car, it's 2.9 seconds. This thing screams fast, uh, and it can actually reach up to top speeds of a little bit over 191 miles an hour. With that top speed, this car has a nine speed twin clutch transmission in it, where each clutch is responsible for its even and odd gears. And with that quickness, you wanna make sure you stay on the road, right? This is absolutely an all-wheel drive, and it's actually an SH all-wheel drive, which stands for super handling. And it has to deal with the electric TMU in the front. So guys, I'm excited for you to come along with me so we can showcase the ins and outs of this car. And we might be able to take it for a drive. All right, guys, gonna hop into the NSX here. 
Uh, one thing that it's not doing right now, usually when you get close to the car, like if you're coming out of the uh, grocery store or whatnot, these will flip open just like this, anticipating you to come. We're in this room here. I'm super close to the car. I'm not far enough away to come back in and re-trigger it. But what's nice about this is when I put my hand right behind it, it recognizes the keys in my pocket. And when you go to open up the car, the glass will slide down ever so slightly to get out of the body. Also, when you're leaving the car, this button right here is actually the lock button. Just like that, super simple. All right, guys, getting down and gonna sit in the NSX. When you first sit down in the NSX, an animation for the Acura symbol plays on your gauge cluster. And it makes me think, I wonder if it'll show a Honda symbol overseas. Oh, that's something too that I guess I learned is that the NSX overseas is the Honda NSX. And the NSX is not built overseas. It's actually built in Ohio. So this can actually tout the title of American made supercar. Looking around this NSX, it does have the upgraded interior package. Uh, it has the Alcaterra and leather combo seats, uh, the Alcaterra roof liner, the center console I'm sure you guys have seen has been like a, a blue or some other color with the outside of the car. This is black. It looks very sleek, very classy. Before I turn on the NSX here, I wanted to show you guys the center console. And in my opinion, what I think is very sleek looking, right? It has smoked out all of the buttons. You don't have any text on them when the car is off. Uh, everything is on a center line right down the center console. It, aesthetically, it looks beautiful. The dynamic shifter to go from comfort to sport, sport plus and track is a comfortable arm's length away. Uh, and it actually contours to your wrist. I don't know if you guys can really see that or not. Uh, to go into park or to reverse neutral, uh, just putting it in regular drive or hitting it again to go into manual mode for the shifters is a push button system. It's very simple. Anyone who's not used to supercars is able to get in this and be comfortable driving it off the lot. We'll go ahead and tap it twice here to get it in auxiliary mode and show you guys the startup on the gauge cluster. <laughs> of course, fasten seatbelt. Gives you a little animation for how to actually start the car by putting your foot on the brake and then tapping the start button. When this one starts up, it automatically goes to the navigation. I'm not sure if that's standard for everything, but this is also a touch screen. I could pinch out to zoom in. I can pinch in to zoom out. Everything I need to control, I can touch like the home screen, uh, go to navigation, phone, info, audio, of course. Audio, that's one thing that I want to talk about with the NSX, right? So if you're in here, you're trying to figure out where the volume at and one of the big complaints is that it's right here on the side right it's a scrolling system that's not the only case it is actually on the steering wheel right here so you do have the physical down up and you can seek left to different stations seek right and if I scroll up again and hit it in, it goes into mute mode. Hit it out, it's back. So glad that that's actually in here. Going back to the steering wheel, it is very simplistic. I really like it. Um, I've gone into other supercars before where the steering wheel is just a mismesh of buttons and configurations and you, you, you just are so uncomfortable you don't know what to do. With this, it's very clean, very clear. On the left hand side, you have all the settings for Bluetooth, stereo, and your volume up and down. On the right hand side, you have your cruise control settings. You have this guy right here which controls your gauge cluster. So I could scroll up check out a couple things and you guys can see on the right hand side here it lets you know exactly where you are in the menu as well which i think is kind of unique something else that i find interesting is that even though the car isn't on i can change the dynamic mode on which i want to be in that means i can actually put it into quiet mode if i want to take off early in the morning and not wake up any of my neighbors uh, i can switch it right to sport mode 
right to Sport Plus. And if you notice between Sport and Sport Plus, the tack changes, right? And then if I hold it, it goes into track mode. All right, guys, let's go ahead and give it a start. What do you say? buddy all right that's in sport mode let's go ahead and put it into sport plus you can hear the actual exhaust note turn down it sound like add a little bit more bass to it and put it into track mode here. See what that sounds like. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and check out the engine. Let's turn it off here. And actually, the back bonnet for the, the engine is right here on the door. Push that, unlatches so we can pull right on up. Super light, really, really extremely light. And look at that engine. What's really interesting to me back here is this little decal, this plaque. And what this is, is this is your world number. This is the number NSX that you have in the entire world. Going down even further is the trunk space in the NSX. And it is large enough to fit a bag of clubs in. You can tell it does go back a little bit on the sides, on the left, and on the right here. The opening is a little bit smaller, and I believe they did this just for the, the uh, bonnet itself. Speaking of which, you do have the camera on the back as well for the reverse, and then you also have a button here which also unlatches it as well. That is the third button in the NSX that you can use to access your trunk. And something special with this that I've been absolutely waiting to do for my number one fan. That's for you, Jay Leno. I just like that click. Let's go ahead and check out the front now. Uh, there is no frunk in this car uh, because of the TMU I keep talking about. Uh, the latch that you want to pop is right here on the left-hand side. Pull that back. And then the actual front hood latch should be right here on the right. Just flick it over, pull up. And this is a one hydraulic hood system. That means that when you do go to close it, you want to pull down on this side here, specifically somewhere close to the hydraulic itself. If you pull down on the front or the left-hand side, it'll actually warp the hydraulic itself, and then you'll have to go get it fixed. So this is what I was talking about. I have no idea how any of this works, <laughs> but I do know that it is an electronic twin motor system where each motor controls the right and left hand wheel individually and adds 37 horsepower to each one. And what that means is it adds the SH, the super handling to the all wheel drive. So when you go around corners, it'll actually make the body roll and everything so minor and it makes it so comfortable that when you wanna go apex and speed out of them, uh, you have the most control possible. So let's go ahead and put the hood down, like we said, on the right hand side here. You can pull down just like that. And then push down. Boom, perfect. And one of the last things we'll talk about on the styling here is all of the vents that you see on the car. Every single vent is functional. So when you're going down the road, you're sucking air in here to cool off the front TMU. It blows out there. 
the uh, side mirrors themselves were actually designed to pull air back into the car, push it back into the body so that when it comes down here to the back, it flows directly into there. What's interesting about this is once it goes in there, not only does it come out the back like you would expect, but underneath right here, you can barely see it, I can barely see it, this is a vent as well that pushes air back. Having this vent adds to downforce on the back of the car or the car itself, which keeps it on the ground when you are flying. All right, guys, what do you say? Let's take it out. All right, and off we go. Yeah. I guess we're going this way. Yeah. And we are in... We're in sport mode, so this is your daily. Sport mode, but it is only the electric uh, engine that's propelling us right yeah, now. Yeah, the three electric motors. Yeah, the three electric motors working in unison with each other Correct. to get us going. And we'll go left on out of here. Now the engine fired up. Kicks in, you guys can hear it, of course. And just letting you guys know, my foot is on the gas and I am not feeling any shifts at all, either from the pedal, from the seat, from the car itself. Nothing. You can see we went over that speed bump back there and we didn't have to angle or do anything goofy. Feel good? <laughs> Handles great. So comfortable. Yeah, we're doing 44 miles an hour right now and we're in electric mode. And that's what happens. I mean, you guys can you can uh, you guys can achieve great fuel efficiency on this car because of the hybrid motor system that's inside of it. It's it's nuts. And no gas guzzler tax. And no gas guzzler tax. Like uh, a lot of the competition. Tom was talking to me about that earlier, and he pointed something out on the window sticker that I didn't even notice when we first were showcasing it. Was on these cars you usually not these cars, but on cars in this uh, category you usually have that or horsepower rating gas guzzler yeah. gas guzzler tax that is, I mean, it can be thousands of dollars. <laughs> So the GoPro ended up dying, but I wanted to show you guys this real quick. This is the price tag for the 2019 Acura NSX. And I guess, again, what you guys are looking at is the $180,000 mark. Well guys, that was the 2019 Acura NSX. You know, thanks Tom. Thanks Frank, thanks Acura of Bellevue for inviting me to come in and showcase this phenomenal car. Um, but now I'm headed back home to upload this footage for you guys. Back now guys, and I'm speechless. 
not only with the insane NSX, but the absolute level of care and respect that Acura of Bellevue gave me while I was there. You know, I visited a lot of places and talked to a lot of people, and hands down, this was the best car experience that I have ever had. If I had my own version of a Doug score, but for dealerships, I would absolutely give Acura Bellevue 10 out of 10 cat paws. No hesitation. Well guys, that's it for this week's video. Here are my predictions for who's gonna die in Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 3. Let's do this. Jamie, done. Brienne, toast. I'm sorry. Tormund, iced. Masande, gone. Nah, I'm sorry about that one too. Beric, dead for real this time. Theon, yeah, he's out of here. Jorah, sorry buddy. I don't want him to go, but I think he's going. And then the big one, Tyrion. Now, I have my own theories as to why for each character, but we'll see who I got right and who I got wrong. As always, guys, we'll see you guys next week. Hey, the camera's that way.